All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. It's going to be an intimate group here because nobody knew I was doing this. Just put up the little watch page a few minutes ago. I'm eating chocolate right now. It's uh, dark chocolate, hazelnut with sea salt. And I'm dipping it in tea. Come on. Mm. It's really delicious. I have to say. Oh, man. It's so good. I'm in London. Um, just got back from, just going to tell you, because there's going to be very few people in the chat. There's a few of there. Good to see you guys. Atomic Punk and Mark. And only folks. There's Chris. What's up, man? How are you, Chris? Good to see you. Chris, the clinics went great over here. I'm going to try and do some in the States. They were really good. Good like target target uh, ones. Um, so uh, we just got back from Europe. <clears throat> so we took a ferry over to, you, you take it from Dover, the cliffs of Dover, you know, uh, to Calais, France. And uh, so it's about a two hour ferry ride. It's actually kind of fun. You get off in the morning and, you know, you're, the, the, the one was a little early coming back. Going was at 10 a.m. Coming back was like at 8 a.m. So you're there at 7 a.m. going through immigration and stuff. But anyway, bus on the ferry, and then you get off, and you go upstairs, and you have breakfast on the ferry, which is kind of fun. It's nice. Sit there and look at the sea. And then you get over to France, and you ride through France and Belgium, and then you end up in the Netherlands to go where we were going. So we played Eindhoven and uh, Arnhem in the Netherlands, which is the first time with Classic Rock Show that we've done – European shows, really. I think they did it many years ago, but this is well, the band was completely different. So, for all intents and purposes, first time. And uh, shows were great. Sold out first night in Eindhoven, about 1,100 people. Really nice venue. And sold out in Arnhem, uh, Arnhem excuse me, the other night, uh, about 900 people. Slightly smaller venue, but really nice. The venues are spectacular. The venue in Arnhem, I mean, they're both beautiful. The first night was like a theater, and the second one was like a uh, look like a giant recording studio. I mean, it was like the 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 walls were all treated like acoustically treated with you know wood, but they were all like you know panels that were all broken up and stuff so that it would diffuse the sound. But they were also doors, so they were like giant studio doors. So like to get into the venue, you could go through the walls basically, and these big doors that swing open. And then you'd go into the venue and the doors were like, I'm not kidding. They're like, each of them was like this thick. So this giant door, the floor to ceiling, I mean, huge would swing open. And it looked like a recording studio door, except with, you know, treatment on one side and then just super thick. So when those would shut, like, and there's a big air gap and then another door on the other side to get out into the main hall or whatever the, the you know, where people would enter and the, where the bar is and stuff like that in these venues. And it was just like, wow, this is incredible. Like these giant, I was so blown away by the doors. They were just amazing. Um, what else was cool? Um, just the fact that we did a little meet and greet after. And uh, just went out to the lobby to meet people and stuff like that. And generally when you do that in England, um, they're trying to kick everybody out, get everybody out of the venues really fast. <laughs> you don't know, close. And so the bar is generally closed. In that, so not always, sometimes. The one here in London stays open for a minute after the gig. But um, the first night in Eindhoven, we, we got out to do the little meet and greet in the lobby. I say little. It wasn't little. It was like a lot of people, actually. But um, we go out there to do it. And there's a DJ. <laughs> They're playing music. And it's like everybody's just hanging out and having drinks and stuff. And it was like a party. In the It was it was really cool. It was it was really nice. So it was, uh, you know, we love England and everything, but it's like a, it was a contrast going to the Netherlands and just a little more loose, but together. I don't know how to describe it. The people there are all very polite, very smart, super nice, really appreciative, big music fans, but yet they kind of like to party a little more. I don't know. It was interesting. It was like it was just a little more of a, I don't know. It's a nice place. I appreciate places like that. You guys know I have, I have a real love for Japan. And in some ways, it kind of reminds me of Japan. Just high functioning. High functioning. <laughs> that's, what, that's what I thought of the other ones. I, not that I haven't been before. I've been many times. But it, it's all, I, I've never been to these two towns. 
uh, it's always nice to go to other cities there because you know when you go there generally with a band you go to amsterdam play there which is awesome it's a great city fantastic but when you get out and go to some of these other uh, smaller cities equally fantastic and maybe even more so in different ways they're just really really cool so i had a great time in the netherlands and um we have two more shows here uh we have a uh Cadogan Hall show tomorrow. So that'll be the third one that we've done. And uh, uh, we play, we always play that same venue in London for some reason. So it's not the world's greatest venue, but we always have great gigs there. So I guess that's good. So, uh, so we're doing a show there tomorrow. Then we go to Eastburn, which is kind of a sleepy retirement sort of zone, but fun nonetheless. We always get fish and chips there by the beach. You can see the ocean for a minute. And then the next day we will fly to Finland and I'll have a day off in Finland. And then we do a show the following day. Uh, and then I go home to LA. So three more gigs. So we're, we're 27 gigs into this thing right now. And three more shows, one in Finland, which should be quite exciting. I think, cause that one's sold out too. I think Helsinki. So that's it. That's what's going on in my world. Uh, what? Who, let's see who's here. Uh, let's see. Nick said he had Thornbuckers put on one of his guitars. That's awesome. Fantastic. What's up, Mister? I only use American Express. <laughs> That's right. I was complaining today on my Threads account about um, um, a lot of England is now cashless. I mean, it's since last year. Forget about it. It's like I went to a Starbucks the other day in Birmingham. Starbucks and they were like sorry we don't take cash and I was like oh, okay and all I had was my phone with me which has my Amex card linked on it Apple Pay and I went to pay and they're oh sorry we don't take Amex and I looked at them and I go really like I'm gonna come here and I'm gonna buy it. it's a Starbucks you won't take cash because I have cash I have change I have bills I've got Apple Pay with Amex you're not gonna take that and they're like, just take it. And I think the, the probably they're just in the process of get, going through this transition. Um, but like, I'm like, at least if you're gonna only take cards, like take everything, you know, take Amex, take MasterCard. Take, I know Amex costs more. I think it's 3%, right? They bill, whereas Visa is like one point something. So a lot of people don't take Amex, but you kind of have to, if you're not gonna take cash, come on. <laughs> Happened to me earlier today too, somewhere else. And I was just like kind of rolling my eyes. Like, really? Like, you're not going to? All right. Because the, the, the reason that I use my Amex is because I have a no foreign transaction fee Amex. So, you know, when you use your credit card overseas, every single little damn charge that you make, you always get a foreign transaction fee, right? It's like 40 cents here, 25 cents there and whatever. So, and your bill looks insane because it's like every single charge is two charges. So I have a no foreign transaction fee Amex, which I pay for every year. Maybe it doesn't even save me money because I'm paying for it. And I can't even use it in some places. The jury's out on my no foreign transaction fee Amex, to be honest. I'm not really sure. Get lounge access here and there in like airports, but the lounges are... <laughs> so, anyways uh immigration sheesh thanks brexit that's right uh yeah that's the only thing about brexit right is uh yeah like that's why we didn't take merch to the netherlands because brexit and yeah and yeah immigration and yeah it's a pain in the ass so i didn't notice it when it was going on i was like why would you limit your ability to travel i know i know all the arguments for it that were but none of it is really come to i don't know it's, it's crazy i mean at least every musician i know is like livid about the whole thing because it's really created a whole nightmare for people here but the whole time it was being argued i was like i that's not a good idea <laughs> chris says he's been looking at the usa dates that's awesome chris is my man at sir yeah we should do some sort of something i don't know maybe with a couple dealers close or something if there is any um what's my favorite john sykes tone hmm i mean the whole white snake album the 1987 album is pretty uh pretty awesome i heard it was a bit of a pain in the butt to get the guitar sound actually and then that bob rock helped them 
because he was working down the hall or something and he came in and made some tweaks and then they they settled on that and i think it was his coliseum threes and but like the you know when you think about the the creamy sound of the guitar solo on is this love that's pretty rad some of his clean sounds like the clean sound on the bridge is still of the night is pretty awesome it's probably a strat di or something um but i also love the thin lizzy live album and i love i mean i always loved uh uh like i when i started hearing thin lizzy it was around that so a lot of people don't that that was kind of the metal thin lizzy around that time when john was in it right they were doing like like thunder and lightning and uh you know cold sweat like but cold sweat i love that i mean it's like it's one of the only songs about gambling <laughs> you know i got my money in a suitcase i headed for the big race I feel a chill down my backbone as I hang up the telephone. <laughs> That's cool shit. Um, uh, of course, Sin City by ACDC. The two best gambling songs ever are Sin City, hard rock gambling songs anyway, are Sin City and uh, Cold Sweat. Sin City by ACDC, of course. ACDC announced their tours this week. Chris Cheney on bass two members or guys that are at least touring with acdc now were on my last record blows me away maybe i brought that up last week i'm not sure i probably did but i can't believe my friends have ended up in playing with acdc it's just so wacky but uh anyways uh let's see here paul just got a gold hhpt signature guitar basically plays itself that's awesome yeah, I'm I'm going back home uh, and I'm not going to have my the ones that I've been playing out here on the road for a few weeks because they're going to be in a shipping container headed for the U.S. But um, I'm looking forward to playing my red one, actually, my dub, double humbucker one because the grass is always greener. I love that guitar. And my gold one's great, too. Maybe I should take the gold one on the road or something, too, just to mix it up a little bit. I haven't had that one out with Classic Rock Show ever. Did you bid for any of Knopfler's guitars? No, I don't have that much scratch. I'm not that. That's too rich for my blood. Greetings from SoCal, says Noise Bloom. What's happening? How's it going? It's going good. Um, I'm tired, I'm, I'm, uh, but I'm having fun. Today was a nice day off. It was great. I went to uh, Soho and had some dinner, and then I went to a really great old pub. Um. That somebody actually recommended. I wonder if it was one of you guys. What the heck was that pub called? Uh, it was in Covent Garden. Uh, what the heck was it called? I can look in my history, I think, and, and find it. Uh, the Harp. And the Harp had great, a great, really, you know, cloudy cider, proper cider. That was nice. And next door, there was actually a really cool... Um, bar called the marquee that was kind of a record they were playing records and uh, singles and um just old rock music and stuff like that so i stopped in there for a second as well that was fun and then i walked to the embankment train station which was nice down by the water and the river and stuff and then i the tangs and then I, I got in the in the train station took a train back here so uh to my hotel and um, that was my day basically so i feel pretty relaxed it's good um We've had a couple, it's, it's been a little bit hectic because I, I've had a, uh, um, uh, my, my, the tech that I normally have out here, couldn't make this run, which is really, really too bad. And I, I really miss him a lot. And, uh, he's normally a stage manager as well, but anyways, so a fellow named Kyle was out and helping me and he threw his back out the other day. So he had to go. And he couldn't make a couple of gigs in the middle. So long story short, I've had, because now we've got a replacement out just for the last three days uh, who graciously agreed to come out. And, um, and but I've had, long story short, three different techs on this tour. So that's been a little nerve wracking and a little crazy because it's, you're always training new people and how to, you know, the rig isn't exactly simple and all that. And the, the guitars, there is seven of them and some tunings and things. So it's, 
it's just a, it's been a little bit of a stress uh, that way. But I think I found somebody for the U.S. dates, which is terrific because I hadn't had any there hasn't been anybody, anybody available that I've been able to lock down till tonight. So I think I think we found somebody that I feel good about for the U.S. So that's good. Um, so that was another thing that happened today. Uh, coffee fun for a, for a weary road warrior. I am a little weary. It's late, so I'm getting ready to think about going to bed. It's actually just after midnight. I'm just gonna hang for 20 minutes or a half hour or something like that, and then go to go to bed. I think, but because uh, we have a gig tomorrow night, gig for the next two nights, and then fly to Finland. Um, it was interesting. So stealth pair to watch the auction for the uh, Nopla guitars. Lady auctioneer was actually pretty funny. I should have watched some of it. I guess I looked at some of them after they sold it. We went for some crazy prices. Sorry, Philip. Thanks. Thanks again for the super chat. I appreciate that. Thank you very much. Um, uh, it streamed live on YouTube. Did it? Yeah, I just I was out here and I saw it like the day after or something like that. Speaking of, you know, those guitars and sirs and stuff, I saw today on like Facebook somebody put up a an early early build that John did because, you know, when when John started at at uh, Rudy's shop at Pensa, uh, Rudy Pensa's Rudy's Guitars in New York, um, they it, the first builds they did were out of parts like Schecter parts. So you used to be able to buy parts from Schecter and uh, and and make guitars out of them. So somebody put up a cool picture today of a, I should find it for you guys actually, just boiling some more water for tea here. Uh, let me find the picture I found on Book of Faces. There it is. Oh, shit, my phone's not on uh, Wi-Fi. This hotel I'm in right now. These hotels, the, the Wi-Fi. If you if you close your phone, it'll knock you off the Wi-Fi. So it drives me insane. Even if you pay for the upgraded Wi-Fi, which is really not that great, and that's what I'm on right now, talking to you guys. But yeah, every time you open your phone, you have to. The, the wonders of touring overseas. When you, when I I don't know about you guys, but it's a pretty good deal. It's a lot better than. than oh, there's no water in the kettle. Um. It's a lot better than what I used to do, but when I tour now, I'm on. I, I basically, I'm a T-Mobile guy, and that's the, the uh, kind of the key for touring. Is T-Mobile is pretty good because they don't charge you uh, data fees and roaming and all that when you're overseas, but they only give you a limited amount of high-speed data. It's five gigs, which you can use pretty fast if you're not careful. And uh, anyways, then you can buy more, but this ends up getting expensive and it's a pain in the butt to log in all the time. So long story short, I end up using the slow data that they give you for free. That is what your phone slows down to after you run out of your high speed data of five gigabyte. And it's shit, like 256K or something, but it's it's so slow. So it's like when it, whenever you need to load anything, it just takes all day. Was that interesting? Probably not. But these are the things that we trials and tribulations of the road. There it is. Kind of a cool looking guitar, right? Look at the neck. What's it made out of? Walnut or something? I don't know, but it's a Schecter neck and Schecter body and stuff. And and the, on the inside of the uh, the pocket, it has John's signature from eighty five. I sent a picture of it to him. He didn't respond. He probably doesn't care. <laughs> yeah, that's a guitar I made. So what? No, I love John. He's the best. Uh, have you tried a Murphy Lab Les Paul? Uh, how do they compare to your Gilly Yaren? You know, I've, I've seen some really good ones. I mean, I've, I've, I, uh, I don't know, man. I'd, I'd have to directly AB and plug them in and stuff to be really, to give you a fair, you know, assessment of that. I, I've seen some really good looking Les Pauls for sure. Like post 2014, they started getting really 2013, 2014. They just started looking really good and i feel like the necks were closer and everything um i still feel like i don't know if the aging is like always looks like an old one you know like really good aging by people that really know how to do it it's just i'm not sure um you see some that look pretty great sometimes though i saw some uh recently i saw one recently that looked really great to me i was in anderton's actually in guildford not too far from where i am right now and they had a couple in there i was having a conversation with the 
the sales guy in there about um, fingerboards and how, you know, they never look right to me when the fingerboard's too light. You know, well, like the dark rosewood, but it's hard to get sometimes. So kind of a prerequisite, though. So I was comparing a couple in there with dark fingerboards and a little lighter fingerboards and thinking how much better the dark ones look. But look at it, it's Beckley, and he's he's lying. Long time listener, first time caller. <laughs> you say that every time. How do you manage to keep your teeth so white in the notoriously dentist adverse UK? Well, it's because I brush a lot, Matt. Matt is a uh, guitar player and engineer extraordinaire from Los Angeles, California. And sometimes we get together and hang out and have food and beverages. Speaking of food, dipping hazelnut chocolate in my tea is lovely. Who knows how to have a good time? Peter knows how to have a good time. That's right. Um... If you didn't have a signature head, would you run a synergy style rig? Well, I used to use the Eggnator. And it's really what the synergy was based on. Um, very similar, right? Chassis with plug-in modules, two channels per module. Really similar. So yeah, I like that style of thing, actually. Um, yeah, I could probably be very happy on a gig like this using a a setup like that, I would think, and finding, you know, I could probably get away with two different modules in a one space chassis and probably do everything I need to do just about. But anyways, electric or manual toothbrush? Electric. Uh, how come I haven't seen a video on the Keeley, Keeley Muse driver? Um. I owe Keeley a couple videos, actually. Um, I just sort of, uh, you know, as you know, I've fallen off the YouTube a little bit just out of being on tour all the time. And he sent me a pedal to do a while ago, and I haven't gotten to it yet. So there's already something I need to... I, I need to make sure they still want me to make a video for it. Occasionally people send me things, and I just don't get to them because of touring and stuff. And then it's like, do you still want me to make a video? Because I'm sorry I didn't quite... You know, so it's just a... That's a thing. It's an ongoing thing. It's kind of an ongoing problem. Uh, what's your favorite food to eat while you're overseas? Well, it just depends. I like to mix it up, to be honest. Um, I've been eating a lot of Japanese food out here. There's a lot of Japanese restaurants in the Netherlands. You know what they have in the Netherlands that's great? And I, the first time I ever did this was actually in uh, um, Aarhus, which is in Denmark. But I know they have them in Denmark, and they have some in Germany, and, um, and in the Netherlands, both cities Eindhoven and uh what was the other place I went starts with an A as well I get it mixed up with Argus because it's not but anyways they have these food halls where you go and it's like their food they're like gourmet food it's like a food court sort of vibe but it's not a food court it's got a bar in the middle really nice where they're making drinks and everything there's tables all the way through and then there's little gourmet restaurants all the way around and kind of like a big U shape, you know, all the way around the place with all the tables in the middle. And you sit down at a table and with your phone, there's a barcode thing or whatever, quick code on the table, whatever it's called. And you, you get on there and all the restaurants are on there and you can just order things from any of the restaurants, any of the little, you know, gourmet places all the way around, as well as order drinks. And they will bring them to you in like five minutes, you know. And so you're sitting there, you can try all this different food. Like, and so we did that the first night. I was like, oh, gourmet food hall. That looks good. And it was like right by our hotel in Eindhoven. And we went in there and sat down. And everybody's like, at first, uh, you know, because i have been to one of these before and I knew how cool they were. I'd been to one in, uh, in Denmark. But everybody was a little like, I don't know if this is the vibe or not. But it was a cool vibe. But they were like, is this going to be? Then the food starts showing up. Everybody's like, oh, my God, this food's amazing. you know. And so it turned out to be really fun. I was like, just trust me, it's going to be great. Um, and it was. it was. It was really, really, really fun. Food was awesome. Drinks were awesome. We had a great time. And, you know, you end up ordering, like, falafel fries. And then you get, like, some salmon sushi rolls. And then you get a couple of ribeye tacos. And, like, you're just eating all this different food. It's so fun. And it needs to happen all over the world. That's what I say. Really great. Sorry, I'm not talking about guitar very much today. <laughs> but uh, I'm excited about all kinds of stuff. What do you think of our beers over here? Well, you know, I'm gluten-free, so I can't drink that many 
uh, that much beer, but I did have a couple gluten-free beers over the course of uh, the last couple of weeks. And generally I'm, uh, I'm, I'm on cider if I'm drinking a, a beverage or a glass of wine or something, cause I can get that here and, and I can drink it, but yeah, occasionally I'll drink a, a gluten-free beer and I love it. I wish I could just drink anything. Believe me. I mean, if I could, I would, but, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, uh-huh, uh-huh. um, Sir Fan says they have a food court like that in some mall in San Diego. Really good food, drinks, and convenience. Interesting. Yeah, it's it's really terrific, that vibe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, all right, what else we got here? Let's see. Hate when I don't have time for a video because I'm touring in England. Well, that's, I know. It's, I should be more, I mean, You, the grass is always greener. I love working at home too. You know, I do. I love being home, and I I like playing dates too and touring and stuff. So it's all good. I just I I gotta keep up with it all. Uh, what else are you guys talking about? Let's see here. Are you growing your hair out? Yeah, totally. It's happening slowly but surely. It's taking forever, but it's like it seems to grow like a quarter inch a month or something. <laughs> Uh, what else have we got here? Rosewood says Atomic Punk. I guess that neck could be Rosewood on that sir that I was showing the picture of. I've lost it now. I don't have it. I guess it could be. It looked more like walnut to me, though, the color. Walnut's a little more... I don't think it's Rosewood. It looked a little... The walnut's a little tighter The or something. I don't know. Like It looked like the neck on my Warwick to me, which is a... I have a Warwick with a walnut neck. It's just like a, a little different kind of color uh, than than rosewood to me. Well, I could be wrong. Maybe it is rosewood. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, all right. Uh, Jed says he filmed Justin Sanderco's original YouTube videos back in 2006. Justin was a pioneer of guitar instruction on YouTube for sure. He, and he makes great videos. He's still very uh, – his videos are terrific, you know. Um, I uh, have a huge amount of respect for you. Thank you. And bought a Sir Bella Combo. Would love to hang one day. Well, uh, where you at? Um, yeah, Justin uh, makes really, really good videos. If you get, he's Justin Guitar on YouTube, and he was one of the first very successful YouTubers that I ever came across. And he actually came to my studio in Santa Monica many years ago when I had one there, and we did a kind of an interview thing and stuff. And I think that's still on YouTube. Um. But he's a, uh, you know, he's a really good, solid guitar player, and his lessons are are, are well done. I think they always were, and he was in right at the beginning. I mean, so was I. I was on YouTube in two thousand six, not thinking it was going to become anything. I had no plan for it or whatever. But I guess it kind of, you know, went somewhere. But uh, he was a little more focused than I was. So I was, I was kind of fat. He was one of the first uh, people that I ever saw on YouTube where I was a little fascinated with what they're doing. It's like, wait a minute, this guy's got a a real plan like it's a little more focused than i am you know and um and he, and you know i think he had a million subscribers or something on one channel and then he started another one that had quite a few subscribers so that was like the first i'd never seen a guitar youtuber with like a million subscribers you know so just interesting uh yeah what's the best meal you had across the pond well i'm still over here um but uh so could be Finland in a few days. Best meal? That's a great question. We, you know, to, to be honest, we were in um, uh, Norwich and we had a great Sunday roast, which is just the traditional, you know, roast beef, gravy, potatoes, you know, all that good stuff. Um, and it was really nice, actually. And it, that's always a great, I love the, and it's more about the hang and, you know, the, the, it's very social and, it's kind of what people do, especially in maybe some of the smaller towns or you get out of the cities or whatever in the, you know, smaller places and they, you go to the pub and have a Sunday roast. And I, I guess that is something that I used to do with my family when I was, because growing up in Canada, you've basically got one foot in Europe and one foot in America. Um, and Sunday roast was something that we did a lot. So maybe that's why I connected with it. But that's the one that came to mind first as being kind of the, everybody was there, the whole band was there, most of the crew or quite a few of them i think were there and and it was just a nice time so that's the 
and it was kind of a really low key pub too. It wasn't fancy, but the food was great. Yeah. Oh, this is interesting. Uh, greetings from Nash Vegas. Was a GC. They had four or five of your signature sirs. Wow, that's a lot. I hope they sell. <laughs> I hope they don't have a backlog of, uh, of of them that aren't selling. But um, that's cool to know. Yeah, they're out there now. I mean, you can definitely get the HSS ones and stuff. They're all uh, they've made a ton in the last quarter, over the last uh, three four months. So towards the end of the year. So there's, a, there's, there's quite a few out there now, I think. Um, I caught up with all the orders on those. And yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, what else are we talking about here? Let's see. Uh, what's my favorite Gary Moore tone? I haven't listened to Gary for a long time, to be honest. Somebody mentioned Still Got the Blues. I mean, that's a great guitar sound. But when I think of Gary, I think a little bit more about like um corridors of power you know like gary moore i guess because that's just where you know it was around 82 or something when i started listening so kind of the hard rock gary when he was playing on a strat a lot um but it's been a long time since i've really listened and gone oh that's great guitar sound or something i'd have to go back and listen to some records and stuff and pick some some favorites he was a ripper though what effects do you use when you play Owner of a Lonely Heart live and what guitar? So I'm playing my new Sir with the Floyd, uh, with the FU Tone Floyd. Um, and uh, for effects, it's um, mainly amp distortion, but I've got a ton of reverb on the intro because there's reverb on the record, very ambient. And then I switch to a very filtered sound after that. That's like a much smaller almost sounds like you know a ds1 into a combo or something and that's the sound on the verse so you go from this big fat and then it breaks down to <laughs> that's my uh, interpretation of how to you know it's just a smaller sound so well uh, to do that i i use um an overdrive pedal on my board and then i filter it using uh using the uh, Eventide H90. So the way I have the Eventide H90 on my board configured, I can use one of the processors um, in the effects loops of the amps in series. Although I'm doing this parallel thing, I use the second half of the H90 in, in a parallel configuration in a mixer. But the front half is in front of that mixer and it's in mono. So I use it for things like um, pitch shifting and, uh, and for um uh eq and stuff and some compression and actually so so for the the filtered sound i'm using it to eq a bunch and really trim the sound down and make it a small compact kind of distortion sound and then when i get into the the verse tone with all the chorus and the, the super clean part i'm using compression actually out of the h90 on that processor so i've got a compressor pedal on in front of the amp and then i've got the h90 compressing in the loop of the amp, so two compressors to make it really ultra squished and sustainy, and it sounds great. It really worked out good. And then I've got a tri chorus, I think, or I think it's the tri chorus that I'm using in, uh, in parallel for the the chorus clean sound. And then the the solo is a fifth up harmonizer using the even tight harmonizer to do the crazy Trevor Raven solo with a really loud fifth in there, you know, it's very prominent. Um, and I, 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 I'm really happy with the tones on that. Um, there's a super chat there. I gotta grab that in a sec. Uh, I love your tone feel. I have thorn bucks in my strats. Love them. Thanks. Uh, what's my favorite guitar? My current is this HSS I have with, the, with the, uh, Floyd, uh, is really fun. It's really, really fun, but I still love the the original HSS too. And I've got, you know, there's a lot of guitars that I, I, I love my old Strat and my 335, and I love my original HH humbucker, you know, signature model, of course. I love my Destroyer, you know, Ibanez Destroyer, um, lots of fun guitars. So, yeah, Steve says I look good for the end of a tour. I'm. I, I just got lucky today. <laughs> I feel like I look haggard. <laughs> uh, 
I feel like I do. But thank you. I appreciate that, man. I actually feel pretty good. I, I don't, I'm not, like, I'm not sick. Thank God. Knock on wood. I had a little cold and it was very minor. Very, very minor. We call it the Johnny Marr cold because our keyboard player works with Johnny Marr and Johnny had a cold and the keyboard player went and did it. Uh, Henry did a couple of days with Johnny and then he came back and he got sick. And so we we're like, oh, we all got Johnny. We're going to get Johnny Mars cold. And then we all did get Johnny Mars cold, I think. So it was the Johnny Mars cold. But anyways, um, what else? What else? What else? Was wondering why CRS brought in a new singer. Um, occasionally, Rudy, Rudy, the, the one of the singers in the band, he gets a lot of work with. He's got a couple different things that he does. Um, with um, there's a lot of kind of corporate things and parties and you know big well-paying gigs. He's got a band, a big big band. I think he's got a funk band. I think he's got two different bands that he does. But anyways, he had a couple gigs that were on the books that were just too much money to to not do and stuff. And that's just the, the truth of it. You know, there were just the gigs that were booked before and they've been on the books for a long time. And with this um, group of people, they've got a lot of great folks that um, they can draw from that have done the tour in the past and stuff. And they're very cool about it. So um, Alex came in to sing for a few gigs. And it's fun. You know, it's fun for us. I mean, Rudy's great. He's like, but then Alex came in. He's a totally different kind of singer, but a great singer. And then it just becomes a slightly different gig, you know, on stage. And it's neat to kind of switch it out. And, you know, always talented people, but... Um, but it, it's it's fun. I mean, we're, we're playing other people's music, so we can kind of do that. And just it's other people, you know, other people come in and interpret it in their way. And then it, it becomes it's like, oh, it sounds like this now. But it comes together very quickly because everybody's really pro. So anyway, so Rudy will be back for the gigs in the in the U.S. Um, on that note, yeah, uh, Bongo's asking how I'm doing. Yeah, I did well. And I hope I God, if I can get through the next week without getting sick. Because every time I've come over here, I've got pretty wickedly sick, like a bad flu or cold every time. And this time, if that little Johnny Mark old was all I got, then I'm pretty stoked. So, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. If in London, are you two days behind live regularly scheduled programming? Well, it's past midnight here, but I mean, I like to think of it as one day, I guess. I, I've been doing them on Mondays because I've had days off on Sundays, but never on, uh, sorry, excuse me. I've had days off on Mondays, but never on Sundays. So nor normally when I'm out here many times, I would have days off on Sunday. So I would just do it on Sunday as normal, you know, but like the 1130 time or something is exactly when we're gigging and in, in, you know, it's like I think seven, eight hours later that falls right into gig time. So um, I was just like, oh, this isn't working out. Like it, what's the point? I might as well just do them on Mondays until I get home. So, and then next week I'd fly on Sunday. So I can't do it on Sunday next week either. Cause that's when I go home. So I'll do another one on Monday next week. And, uh, and then after that back to scheduled programming, it'd be one more of these at a weird time on a Monday. Yeah. Christopher says, would love to see you do a clinic on long Island. That, that'd be awesome. I'd love that. I don't know if we're playing on long Island this time. I know we're doing a Jersey date, but that's about as close to there as we get. I think pretty sure yeah um i'm gonna go down and grab that super chat what time is it anyway it's 12 26 i'm gonna hang another like 10 minutes i think and i'm gonna split you guys and get a, a little sleep because it's late doing these short ones late um that's peter he says something for the monday coffee and chocolate pun thank you my friend i know now it's now it's tea and coffee and chocolate we're widening our choices of of things here um sometimes it's ciders just depends. Thank you, my friend. Thank you for the super chat. Appreciate that. Uh, it would be cool if you could jump on a song when that Best of Both Worlds tour comes around with Sammy and Joe and Michael Anthony and Jason Bonham. Uh, I would love to do that. But, you know, I think Joe is one of my heroes. So he's got it covered. He can, he can handle it, but I'd love it. You know, it's funny. I don't really know to be just being totally honest, I don't know a lot of Sammy era Van Halen. Like I know the Dave era Van Halen. And that's not to say I don't like it or you know, I just, it's like, it's just, it's almost like different guitar playing. It's like, um, his, 
I mean, I know there's some great, there's some gems in there. When I go back and I listen to a few of those, like uh, all fired up and like different, uh, or uh, some of the other songs, like the ones off OU812 and 5150. I'd love to learn how to play that. I've never learned it. So it's funny. I don't, I don't actually know a lot of the Sammy era stuff or things off of, uh, things off of, I certainly don't know anything off balance. And, you know, it's, it's, yeah, I kind of focused on the early era, era when I was learning Van Halen. I did put up a reel this week with Rudy before he left. Playing I'm the One in the dressing room just for fun, just for a minute. Showing off this little Black Star amp that I got that's like a one of the little $75, you know, battery-powered ones. They sound great. They're fun for dressing room practice. Um, And that reel got a ton of views. It got like, I think it's a 250K or something like that. So people like that. <laughs> fun if you dropped on stage with a guitar and amp and only one pedal it's going to be a pt100 and my signature hss guitar and a tuner that's it <laughs> a tc poly tune now, people probably don't like that but you gotta have the tuner or it's not gonna sound good Discord and Origin Effects Cali 76 says you're all uh, for 100 bucks. Enjoyed your review. Do you still use it? Um, the original one, like the big giant one, I love that thing. And it's actually in my drawer at the studio. Actually, I will pull it out sometimes and use it on bass and stuff. Um, just because it sounds great for that. Um, or do you mean the small one? I, I, I don't know if I'm crazy or not, but I always felt like, and it, I probably am, the small one's probably just as good. But the, I always felt like the big one, the original one had some mojo or something. I don't know. That was really cool, but uh, yeah, yeah. No, I I still have that on deck for sure. Uh, let's see. Uh, I had a great night at Warwick Art Center gig, but where was the crowd? That was the least. That was what I was saying. I think last week, or was the the least, uh, you know, sales of any gig on the whole tour. It was a pretty good gig, though. I thought. It actually turned out pretty good. Um, but yeah, that was a crappy selling. That was it. There was like, you know, it was like 400 people or 350 people or something like that, I think. It was, a, you know, small. This band usually does anywhere from um, 700 to the biggest would be like probably 2,000, 2,200, something like that. That's kind of the numbers. And there's a lot of gigs where you're in the kind of like, seven eight nine hundred you know some of the smaller towns and stuff in the theaters that we play and that's a great size for a small theater gig you know but we did um like birmingham symphony hall and we had i think that was 2100 or something and cadogan when we play there we do two nights and it's sold out 1200 each night usually or 1100 or maybe it's a thousand i can't remember but anyway it ends up being a couple thousand um uh, over the course of two nights and not a lot of people come to both nights it's interesting it's like it's all new people all the time and this year we're doing three there so it's good you know but uh uh shahar is asking uh, what happens when i eat gluten stomach ache diarrhea a touch of both <laughs> you know how many details do you want <laughs> uh generally bloating you know, that's what I, I get bloated. And yeah, it affects all that without going into details. It can definitely, you know, um, change all your habits, let's just say. So, but yeah, that uh, that tends to be the, uh, it was always for me, my belly was always sore. Let's just put it that way. And I always felt bloated. Like I wasn't, I, I remember when I went to this doc and he was like, you've got a malabsorption problem. You're not digesting your food properly. That's what's going on with you. That's why you feel the way you do. And he says, probably dairy or gluten. And I just hadn't tried cutting out gluten. And then when I did, it was like, well, that's better. Instantly, you know, that's what I found. So, uh, listen to the Frontiers album the last few days and get those songs out of my head. Chain Reaction after the fall. Frontiers is a great record. Um, really cool. Uh, it's almost like prog on one side, you know. We're talking about Journey, right? Um Really, really cool record, I think. I like I always liked it. Um Pete, best solo boost in the loop. 
Buxom RC Superconductor Unit 67. I mean, any of those will work. I, I probably wouldn't, maybe not Unit 67. I'd probably just use something kind of clean boosty. Coco would work fine. Zio would probably work pretty good. I'd do something not too colored. I mean, you don't want something that's going to give you distortion or anything like that because it's in the effect loop. So, I mean, there are no hard and fast rules. Maybe you put a Unit 67 in there and add compression and trouble boost. And that sounds amazing. I don't know. But to me, it's like that's where you put a – you're coming post-distortion and you probably want something that's just more volume. And then in front of that, you could always put a, um, you know, clone or something or tube stream or something for more gain going into the, you know. And, and if you do it with a loop switcher, then you can turn them both on at the same time and you have total control. But, yeah, I, I would say probably an RC booster would probably work pretty good. Um, or a Coco. Yeah, I mean, a microamp. I mean, is you really, as long as you're pedal level, and should work fine, I would think. You know, any of those. Um, you could use an EQ in the loop. How's your quad cortex sounding on your live gates? I, I'm not using quad actually out here right now. Not that I wouldn't, um, and I've used it in on this tour in the past, but I just, I don't have it on this tour right now. I will probably be employing it in a few months though, because I've got some fiber fighting stuff coming up and that's my rig for them. So uh, I'll be putting together that little setup again and it works great for that band. So i just go do that. Anything out of Nam catch my interest. Um, I wasn't there. So it's like, you know, and I don't really think, Dave's new Plexi amp is really neat, but I saw that before the show <laughs> when he was working on it. Um, anything else? I can't. I can't remember anything right now, to be honest. What about you guys? I said. I guess I was just reading about that new Celestion speaker. I think they introduced that new Celestion G twelve one hundred. It's not a hundred watt speaker. It's a thirty watt speaker, but it's for the hundredth anniversary, so they call it the G twelve one hundred. It is quite expensive, though. It's an Alnico. Uh, new design, and I'd, I'd love to try it, but it is a very expensive speaker. <laughs> so I don't know if anybody's interested or going to get one, or if it's too rich for some people. Uh, Three-pot guitar, volume, volume, tone, or volume, tone, tone? I kind of think volume, volume, tone, even though I have a lot of guitars that are volume, tone, tone. But a couple volume controls for each pickup, or like, you know, it's just neat to be able to kind of blend. Or you can do different things. Like, let's say you got a Strat. You know, you could put the middle pickup on a volume control, and then you could get, like, the outer two pickups, right? And, like, just do a three-way switch. And then you could then blend in the middle pickup with the third volume, with the, or with, sorry, with the second volume control, and get it. So you could almost get a Strat to sound like a Tele, you know, with the outer two pickups the middle position on the telly and then you could blend in the middle pickup and you'd have um via that other volume control and then you'd have like three pickups on very unique sound so yeah i just i don't need two tone controls really i mean i, I just need one and, and to be honest i'd only put the tone control on the bridge pickup and that's just me you know i have one tone control just wired to the bridge yeah you know um how loud would you turn up your 212 PT cab with a bass guitar before you were scared you'd damage the speakers? Uh, you could crank it pretty loud. I mean, it depends on the amp. If it's an SVT, you could definitely screw up a couple of 75 watt speakers if you're really pumping it. But if it's the 212 horizontal with the Greenback 75s and you're not like going crazy with volume, you'd probably be fine for, you know, doing a gnarly guitar rig kind of bass tone like a la Doug Pinnock or Chris Squire for the high end you know um just depends on the amp really yeah yeah, yeah. uh well um let's see what else we got here do we know for sure what pot was in the Frankie? No, we do not. We have no idea. You know, we can only assume it was a 500K, but maybe it was 250, you know, or something else. We don't know. Could have been a pot out of a strat. That's one of the, I've talked about that with Friedman. Like, we really don't know. 
His guitar tone was pretty bright and clear, though. So I, I really tend to think it was probably a, at least a 500K, you know. When he'd roll down, there was always tons of clarity. Think about the guitar sounds on Hear About It Later or, you know, it didn't sound like dark and rolled off or like a 250K humbucker thing. I just don't think so. So, yeah. Uh, do you plan on use amps on stage for the U.S. Classic Rock Show Tour? Yeah, totally. My Everything's coming over from this tour, just going over there. So... Be same stage, two four twelves, two heads. I think that's what's happening. Um, it's all getting put in a container. I think. Uh, yeah. Uh, saw the ad for the Celestian Hundreds. Have the software after watching your demo. It's great. Use it the PT fifty. Awesome. I think you mean the Celestian software. Uh, have you ever heard of? Low knob. No, I don't know what that is. I don't know that. Ryan says, how many shows are you doing in the U.S.? Uh, we're doing um, 20, I think. I think it's 20. I'm not even sure they've all been announced. See, in Clearwater, yeah, we're doing one there. Clearwater, Florida. Uh, we're playing in Jersey. We're playing in all over the place. Dates are all at classicrockshow.com. Theclassicrockshow.com. Whatever's been announced so far. So there's some stuff in Georgia and stuff in New Hampshire and stuff in Jersey and stuff in Florida and all over the place. Detroit. We're playing Detroit. Can be fun. Well, guys, I think I'm done for today. It's 1240. I feel like it's time to call it a night. I got to get up at... Uh, 10 or so and uh, be out of here to go to the venue because we got to get tomorrow night. So the hotel that we always stay in here is not very close to the venue. So I got to get up and somehow make my way over there with all my stuff. So um, I'm going to jet, but this was really fun. Thanks for showing up. 52 minutes. That's not too bad. right? Next week I'll do a similar thing. Um, I'll be back in LA, probably jet lagged and weird. Uh, I'll, I might do it earlier because you know, what time is it in LA right now? It's 4.40 p.m. and I'll be like this tired because it'll be the day after I get home. So maybe it'll be good though. If I do it around this time next week, maybe it'll keep me up. <laughs> I'll do it and then go out for dinner, come back, try and stay up till 9 p.m. or 10 and then go to bed so that I don't wake up any earlier than 5 a.m. All right, everybody. Thanks for uh, hanging and showing up at this weird time. I know it was random and out of the blue, but we still had 240 people online, I think, at one point. That's awesome, Mike. I appreciate you all. Thanks for your super chats. Thanks, Peter, for that one. All you guys that left super chats, I appreciate you. Did I miss any? I hope not. Uh, there's the one about volume controls. I didn't. Volumes and tones. I don't think I missed any. So, um uh, one last little comment here, Bongus. Got to tell you, I'm a Celestian freak, but I've been playing around with the Warehouse ET65. Got to tell you, it's amazing. I like some Warehouse speakers. I liked their one called the Retro 30. I thought it sounded really good. Um, we were testing them for a while for my amps to see if maybe we wanted to go that route. And we, I ended up sticking with Celestian. But I did like that Retro 30 speaker. I thought it was really a pretty darn good, kind of just broadly Celestian sounding, you know, cool rock and roll speaker. Um, their greenback one, I didn't bond with as much, whatever was supposed to be like a greenback, but the retro 30, slightly bigger magnet and stuff that I was like, this thing sounds good. It sounds cool. So it makes some good stuff. Mini Pennsylvania dates. Yeah, we're starting in Scranton. That's right. So the very first, uh, night of the, the, the U S tour would be Scranton in the theater there. And yeah, there's some Pennsylvania going on. So we will be out there. Thanks for spending time with us, says Noise Bloom. Hey, thanks for spending time with me. Appreciate y'all. I'm going to go to the land of sleepies. Surfing mattress reef, as they say. Everybody have a great week, and I'll see you next uh, Monday from Los Angeles, California. All right. Take care. <laughs>